going on people, Cash Cream Developments and welcome to another episode of Cream or Access. Now this episode we'll be working on Tony Beasley's awesome Nissan GTR. It's one of the most packed GTRs in the UK, mostly down to the amazing satin chrome colour that's on the car. It's a very unique and one-off colour when he first brought it out. Uh, absolutely, I, I love it, it's one of my favourites. Um, it's coming to have a full wide body conversion done. It's not having our own kit, it's having someone else's. So we have got absolutely nothing to do with the kit that we're fitting on the car except we're just fitting it, okay? Um, he's asked us to take this job on because he uh, respects what we do, um, how we take care of GTRs, especially with the cutting and welding that's required on this car to enable us to fit the wide body on. There's a lot of work involved. He knows what we, what we do and what we're capable of doing. Okay, first things first, we're going to get it in, get it stripped, get the um, arch work done. It's got to be cut, welded, fabricated, all the rest of it and uh, basically making sure that the wheels can go right up, especially if it goes for air ride in the future. We have to make sure that there's plenty of clearance and room inside the wheel arch when we cut it and weld it and take it up. So that's going to be done. We're going to seal it all off so it's all nice and waterproof in there, fit the, uh, the wide body kit into, on the whole car and then fabricate wheel arch liners to go inside as well to then to cap it off and obviously to make it professional uh, and more solid. On to the next one. Enjoy the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share! Right guys, I want to talk a little bit about the bodge repair that's been done on the back of this port pack on this car. Um, you may remember the video that I put up on Instagram where I was really, I, was, I mean that was the time that I discovered it, discovered it. so I was fuming and I put that post up um, and I still will say even now that stuff like this really, really, really annoys me, it gets under my skin because I mean this is, this is not a, a Mickey Mouse car, it's an Nissan GTR, yeah, um, and it's had some bodge repair done on it where they've left the dent in like that and if you come down and look closely the amount of filler that is on there is, is ridiculous, it's a joke. Okay, um, you can see obviously we've done our arch work and the welding needs to be finished on there and sealed off. Um, I've had Tony come in to discuss the situation obviously. This was done way before we bought it um, and done before even the previous owner bought it. So it just goes back to when nobody knows when it was done. Um, but nonetheless, Thankfully, he's going with the whole wide body, so this will actually affect what he's doing on the car. The wide body, it's not, not I don't mean that it's going to cover it so you don't see it, because it was covered with the filler, you didn't see it then either. What I mean is, um, it doesn't really need to be rectified as such because we've cut away most of the arch there, which had the filler on it. Um, smaller part has been left, there, left in, but what we're going to do is um, we're going to sand that back, feather it in so it doesn't really have that much filler on it anymore. Uh, but the arch work, uh, new arch will obviously um, cover it. So it won't need the filler work on there, it won't need to be shaped up the way it was. Um, we're just going to make it nice, we're going to remove as much filler as possible, and we're going to fit the new arch on top. And just to give you an idea of how much filler is on this car, this is a magnetic pickup tool. And if you look, you see, solid. Okay? It doesn't want to stick at all. That's how much filler is on here. And over here, it's not even picking up the magnetic tool at all. So you can see, it's widely spread along there. It's the same. Um, but obviously we had to let Tony know because um, at the end of the day it's his car and you know he has the right to know what's going on with his car um, and the, the, the state that it's in before we proceed because obviously he might want me to rectify this and make it absolutely mint. It doesn't really make sense now because obviously the arch is cut so this will never ever see atmosphere ever again. Just gonna make this nice, get the arch work on top, line it all up, bowl it all up, make sure it's perfectly fine and get rid of this horrible filler that's on the car. All the fabrication work has all been done on the car. All the welding 
on the back has been done. It's all been sealed in and uh, sealed off with primer before we go and undercoat it. Dave's working on the front of the car, putting the front balance on. It's all been bottled up now, but the body kit manufacturer who has uh, designed this kit has made their own under tray. So we've had to uh, hack and chop the original My 2 that you under tray up to get it to fit. Dave's been doing that yesterday upstairs. Um, took loads of chunks out of it to get it to work and eventually got it there. And as you can hear, he's still drilling holes. Where he's obviously going to fit new nuts and bolts to uh, obviously hold the lock together. But the main thing is it's on now, so the job there is done. The rest of the car is ready. All the artwork and fabrication side of it's been done, all the welding has been done. You can see on the back, it's all been sealed off now. The original size guys had to be removed as well because uh, Tony sold them off to someone, they were aftermarket ones. So we've had to go and put the OEM ones back on the car because the body kit that's been provided uh, has side skirts that need to be fitted to the OEM side skirt. So a bit unusual but uh, that is how it's done on this on this car, so that's what we're doing. Uh, and hopefully by the end of the day we should have a fully built car. That's a, that's, a, that's the idea. Um, and that's the plan. So fingers crossed we get it all done today and tomorrow will be final check. Uh, wash clean and develop back to 22. Okay guys, I just want to talk about an issue that we have with this body kit that's been supplied. Uh, this is one of the four carbon arches. And the issue we've got is they have no inner wheel arch liner extension. That is uh, crucial for when you're obviously wide running a car because you have issues with a huge gap underneath where all the crap's going to be going up if you don't extend the original OEM plastic wheel arch liner. Our fenders, as you can see, this is uh, one made straight out of the mould, so it's raw. But just for demonstration purposes, I want to show you a plastic inner wheel arch liner which comes glassed in, yeah? It's absolutely solid. Um, issue has been resolved and cured, um, and there will be no gap. The plastic wheel arch liner will simply screw up into that in several locations, and it will be solid, and it will never, ever fail. So that's how we have gotten over our fender design. So we're faced with a situation. Um, so we're trying to make a good situation out of the bad one, basically. And have to figure out a way to overcome this. Now, you could have a piece of fiberglass um, and bond it in. That's one way of doing it. We don't want to do that because if the bonding agent or the sticker flex or tiger saw, whatever bonding agent you want to use, if it fails, that will come off at a rip, will go inside your wheels and can cause um, all sorts of problems. So we don't want to do that. Secondly, we don't want to fiberglass it in as well, because when fiberglass dries uh, and cures, it will more than likely warp the outside of this panel. And because Tony obviously wants the exposed carbon effect, we can't then go back and cure it by giving it a skimmer filler, blocking it, sanding and making it nice. This has to go in the car as it is. So that's, a, that's another issue that we have to face. So for that reason, we're not going to glass it in. What we are going to do is the OEM, uh, the OEM aluminium arches on the car, we're going to cut the excess that we need to remove in order to bring the wheels out, of course. Uh, we will flip the lip by about 10 mil and give ourselves a nice lip flipping out. We'll then add a fiberglass extension onto that and screw up into it using posi screws, stainless steel, of course, just like everything else that we use. Yeah. And these are exactly the same as OEM screws as well. So Nissan do use exactly the same screws on the car, just different size heads. Um, so yeah, aesthetically, it's not very pleasing to look at uh, because obviously you've got screws facing up at you. Uh, but nonetheless, it's not an issue because obviously this goes over the top. You're not exactly going to go around driving around with your fenders off the car. So, uh, that said, that's the plan. That's how we're going to get over this problem. Um, one other problem that we have as well with these, uh, well, one of a few other problems that we have with this kit is this uh, surface here, this has to sit and butt up against the OEM wing perfectly. Unfortunately, this doesn't. So we have to get over that by sanding and blocking and, and reshaping this edge so it sits as tight as possible to the to the wing or the front fender. Um, but the problem we have 
is if that isn't sitting flush flush, then the rubber trim they've supplied it tends, it tends to be baggy in between these bolt holes because these bolt holes is, is what's going to actually pinch the rubber trim that goes around it. So over here it's going to be fine where the holes are, but in between, if this isn't, isn't flat, it won't pinch the rubber either. So then that over there will be saggy. So we're going to have to try and get over that by you obviously trying to flatten this as best as we can, um, and then by applying a little bit of glue all the way around to get that. Another issue that we have is the gel coat on these on these fenders are, are very uh, frail, so we can't pull the bolts in too tight either because it's already we've already had it on the car and test fitted it. Uh, we found that it's um, collapsing around where the bolts are when you bolt them in when you tighten them up. Um, so you've got to be very very careful how, how tight you go with it because uh, that's another issue. But nonetheless, obviously the concept's great. We love it. We think the car's going to look amazing when it's finished. But we have to obviously try and make good of what we have here in order to try and bring, bring this up to our standards so that's what's going on if you come over to the car i'll show you the screws from underneath and how they look so this is matt griffin's gtr it's got a full my 70 front end conversion uh bonnet and front fenders the same ones you just saw in raw form you now see in complete uh, painted form if you look up inside the wheel arch You'll see the exact same screws I'm talking about, which is the stainless steel posi screws screwing up in the wheel arch liner into the three inch lip that we have provided with our front fender. Now again, as I said, it may not be aesthetically pleasing to look at, but at the end of the day, it's, you've got to do what you've got to do to get over certain things. And the main thing is as long as the job's done right, the car's built properly and it's solid, that's all that counts. I mean, these are self-tapping posi screws. And if you were to come around this side and look inside, you'll also see the end of them poking out the exact same way. All you've got to do is look down there. But that is how cars are built. Um, so that's what we're going to do to get over this issue and build this car in this way, uh, along with all the other issues that we have to get over. But it's what we feel is right, and that's what we're going to do. Happy days. Alter the wing a little bit more. Because of the way the arch is made up, you have to take this part of the wing back. So Dave's just going to go and bend that back, probably panel will be a little bit more, it goes back another 5 10 mil, maybe 5 mil, and that should allow the, uh, the front now to go on. Children in one place. We're just going to try and modify that and fill up the gaps. Chris, got a solution? Cable tie it back. Cable tie it back, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> been cut, welded and primed to allow the wheel clearance and now we're just going to give it a final protection coat of stone chip protector. Okay, we're in the last and final stages of the car now. It's going to be finished and released to the customer today. Tony will be here soon. Um, all the wheel arch liners are done, as you can see, on the side. We finish off real nice. Same in the back. It's all done. Dave's just working on getting the side sets on now, uh, which are all pain in the arse because there's no fitting uh, brackets or um, anything like that. So we're having to make our own, as you can see in the background. That there will allow uh, Dave to put the side skirt on and screw it up from underneath, securing it in place making it solid obviously and uh, keeping the, everything nice and safe and stable. Once that's done, uh, we just got to go around the car, put the rubber seal around each of the, each of the 
wide panels and uh, give the whole car once clean. The panels are nice flat polish, get it looking nice and shiny and uh, spaces on the car, wheels on, yeah. so yeah. Not a lot left to do now. Looking forward to seeing the car completely finished on the floor and out the door. Are these bad boys? Look at the size of these. Completely unadvisable, against regulations, and what we would advise our customers to have. You can't put a price on your life, you can't put a price on safety, so we won't be fitting these to the car. We've asked Tony if he wants you to uh, uh, be fitted to the car, then he's going to have to do that himself. So when he comes to collect the car, he'll be doing this. I mean, it'll probably be okay so long as he drives slow, but I don't even want to put my name to this. Um, because we obviously don't want to have any liability uh, if anything does go wrong. I mean, it's an 850 horsepower car or 800 horsepower car, um, or thereabouts, and that's just far too much power to be putting through spaces this big. This is 90 mil, way too big. I mean, if it was 40 or something, you know, you could get away with it, but this big a spacer, big no, no. So Tony, make sure you get these sorted out. I know we've had a conversation about it, but don't leave these in the car and think you can get away with it just because some people have told you uh, that they've had it on the drift cars, for example, and it's been fine because there's plenty of videos out there that I've seen personally myself where drift cars have had spaces like this that have failed catastrophically, may I add. But the difference with drift drivers is they're drifting around tracks um, and they're completely safe with safety harnesses, roll cages, all the rest of it, so they flip and roll over. Chances are they'll be pretty safe. You're driving a street car where you'll be doing, you know, 100, 150 mile an hour on the roads probably or wherever. I didn't say that, but you know, you know what I mean. When you go out on the cruises and events and that sort of thing with a battalion or your friends, you're going to be trying to keep up. You won't slow, keep it slow. You're not going to be driving 40, 50 mile an hour. You know, um, and I would in a million years want to put my name to putting this on your car. So, yep, we won't be doing that. Tony will be doing that, and that will be the last and final piece of the puzzle. Happy days. Okay, so Tony's already been in. He's fit the spacers like we uh, spoke about earlier. And he's happy with that, that they're, they're, they're on and they're secure. I'm gonna go around and just double tighten them with a torque wrench. I've said 150 foot pounds of torque, which is massive pressure. So there's no way in the world that these, uh, these nuts are gonna actually fail. Just send him up the road now, so just do a little bit of shopping in Lakeside while I go around and uh, talk his wheels up, get the wheels on. And Chris will give it a good once over and a wash and clean outside. And we'll, we'll present it to him shortly. Tony is here to collect the car with Sony. We hope you like what we've uh, done with the car. It looks absolutely uh, spot on. We love it. Um, we're going to get Sonny's reaction first. So let's pull Sonny in first, yeah? Right. Sonny first, yeah? You first. Okay, come on. Let's hear your reaction. Bang! Hey! Go on, let's have a look. Do 
that, bro? Oh, Tony! Oh, come along! Jumpy, jumpy, come on, bro! It's for the car, man! It's for the car! Four for me! Right guys, so first one complete for 2018 Tony Beavers Nissan GTL with a four wide body uh, turnaround in record time, six days we took four wide body GTR, all the fabrication, arch work, rolling work, all done, completed, carbon body fitted on the car. We're happy. I hope you're happy. Yep. Yep, he's happy. And that's all that matters. On to the next one, baby.